What is up guys, Rick Kak is here. Thank you so much for stopping by and happy Thanksgiving. Unless you're Canadian like me and you've already celebrated it because you're so far ahead of the curve, I'm just playing. All right, now today we're going to be discussing the upcoming season of Dawn for Destiny 2. It was just announced that the reveal stream for this new season is on December 4th. Now during this stream, I'm gonna have my eyes peeled for the five things I'm gonna be talking about today that are really going to help Season of the Dawn be as good as it can possibly be. Also, these five things are a little bit more nuanced, isn't like, number one, more content. More content equals better. Like, obviously, we all know that, but these are things that, you know, aren't necessarily that obvious, but really go into making a new addition to Destiny very replayable, very deep in terms of content. And again, this will help it improve over Season of the Undying because although Shadow Keep offered a lot of content, Season of the Undying really didn't. It was like the Leviathan's Breath and Vex Offensive. And it did still give you the option to purchase just Season of the Undying. So there's a lot of Destiny 2 players who did that and are not happy with the seasonal system so far. So Season of Dawn really has to improve upon the mistakes of Undying to help the player base kind of forgive the lack of content that it provided. But before we begin, super quickly, Astro is having a Black Friday sale. It's on right now, 25% off pretty much everything. And if you click my link in the description down below, that's going to apply my affiliate code, which I think will stack with the 25% off. So get a huge discount on headsets, the C40 controller, etc. Check it out. In any event, let's get started here. And these are ranked in order of importance, in my opinion, with number five. And number five is farmable weapons. So this is a trend that really started with Season of Opulence and the Menagerie, the ability to go and specifically farm certain weapons. It was definitely carried over within Season of the Undying with the ability to get weapon bounties from Ikora. So if you really wanted the Pulse Rifle, for example, you could just pick up one of those bounties every single time you completed a Vex Offensive run and specifically try to farm that weapon. Shadow Keep also implemented a version of this with the moon weapons. If you want, you know, the love and death grenade launcher, you can go and specifically farm it. Now, the entire thing about phantasmal fragments and the phantasmal cores and the fact that you can only hold 30 fragments even though it costs 20 to make a core, like, that's totally ridiculous, but it still, again, gave you the power to kind of cut down on the RNG BS that comes around with farming and let you go after a specific weapon and improve your chances of getting the role you actually want. So, that is a very good thing, and I'm just saying that Season of Dawn definitely needs to continue it and cannot take a step backwards because we're now so used to having this power over what we're farming that taking it away would be a terrible idea. And it's important to mention all that because Bungie did take it away in the past. With Season of the Forge, the actual Forge weapons and weapon cores were very farmable. If you wanted the hand cannon, you could go and try to get it again and again and again. And then the very next season, Season of the Drifter, there was none of that. It was just complete pure RNG and it was a huge step backwards. So they cannot do that again. They need to continue the great trend that they're on. All right, moving on from there, thing number four is sandbox changes. Now, thankfully, there is a big sandbox change coming with the overhaul of the solar subclasses, or at least some of the trees of the solar subclasses for the different classes within D2. And there is some big changes, like totally new melee abilities, completely overhauled skills, all of that is fantastic, but I really hope that isn't the only thing changing. I hope that we see some buffs, potentially some nerfs to especially the weapons. Um, weapon classes that really aren't doing too great, maybe auto rifles, like no one's really using auto rifles, bump those up just a little bit, change around some exotics especially, breathe some light into some of the exotics that just aren't seeing any play. Just mix things up so we're not using the exact same weaponry that we're using right now. Make this new season coming feel different. And obviously that's very important. And it is likely going to feel different because of a whole new seasonal artifact. And that's going to enable some brand new builds. But if you have this fancy new build, 
and you're still using that not forgotten, for example, that you've been using for the past, you know, year, and it's still as good as it pretty much always is, like, it's getting pretty tiresome running into those same weapons again and again and again, and it really causes frustration, as in PvP especially. So introducing some sandbox changes to just shake things up and provide a fresh coat of paint to PvP is I think really, really gonna help things. All right, moving on from there, we have thing number three, and that is good exotics. Now this is something that, you know, people kind of overlook sometimes, but the actual quality of an exotic is so much almost more important than how many exotics are added. Like if you add four new exotics, let's say, with this upcoming season, four new exotic weapons, let's narrow it down there, and one of them is good and three of them suck, you might as well just add one good one. Like stuff like the Xenophage, although it's getting a big buff next season, and although it's an extremely unique weapon, the Xenophage, because it just was bad in PvP and PvE, like, no one cared, especially since you had a pretty extensive exotic quest that was somewhat time-consuming and somewhat difficult behind getting that weapon. So many people, like, looked at the quest and went, okay, that's pretty difficult, looked at the weapon, saw that it sucked, and went, eh, not gonna do it then. And so you had this crazy amount of content behind this exotic quest. It was a really cool quest that not that many people actually did because the weapon wasn't worthwhile. The Deathbringer too. That thing is all right in PvP, but in PvE it sucks. And so you need to have weapons that are actually usable, that actually have a place in the game, especially the ones with an extensive exotic quest behind it. The Divinity is a good example of a weapon that achieves that. The Divinity is a very powerful weapon. It's part of some extremely meta damage phase tactics in PvE now. It's actually a desirable weapon. So people, although the Divinity quest is rather hard, it, you'd have to go through an entire raid to do it, like a lot of people are actually wanting to get that weapon because it does have utility. So the exotics in Season of Dawn, especially the ones acquired by quests, need to be actually decent and usable to have people actually want to go out and get them. But it is time to move on from there to thing number two, and that is updates to existing activities. This is something that I believe Bungie has really been dropping the ball on in recent updates because it seems like these activities that can be integral to your experience in Destiny 2 are not seeing really any love at all. And it's really not too difficult to give them some love. Now, the ritual weapons are a good example of a little bit of love. Gambit doesn't really get anything new, but if the Gambit Ritual weapon is quite good, then you have a reason to go out and play Gambit to get it, of course, right? But I'd really like to see a few new things being added into the loot pools for these main pillar activities for Destiny 2. Strikes, for example, you know, with Shadow Keep, there was two new strikes added. Neither one had any new Nightfall loot. Why? That would have been a great addition to the game. Also, with Crucible, the actual Crucible loot pool hasn't changed in a ridiculous amount of time. Iron Banner, Iron Banner is the most egregious example. They couldn't add one new Iron Banner weapon to the loot pool to make people more excited for that event. That stuff needs to change. And we're not talking about a lot of content here. Literally, that example of one new Iron Banner weapon, the Time Worn Spire, which is an old Iron Banner pulse rifle, it's one of the only kinetic pulse rifles in the fast rate of fire archetype. If they remade that and gave it random roll capabilities next season, that would be a super desirable weapon because the fast firing pulses are really in the meta right now. And that's all you would need. One weapon is all you would need to really spice up Iron Banner and have people excited for it. But the same goes for the Crucible loot pool. The same goes for the Strike loot pool. We need just like one new weapon in each of those activities to spice things up because you are going to be playing those activities, those old activities, 
quite a bit just to get pinnacles, to get the bounties, etc. And if it's just the exact same stuff as it's been for the past year, it's not very exciting. All right, moving on from there, thing number one. This is the most important thing that I think would really make Season of Dawn a fantastic addition to Destiny 2, and that is more weapon perks. Guys, Season of the Drifter was the last time we got a big influx of new weapon perks, and we are still feeling the reverberations of that. Multi-kill clip, swashbuckler, Full court for grenade launchers, firing line for sniper rifles. All of these perks were so good, they were meta changing, and still today, if a weapon is capable of getting one of those perks, it is like god tier. You know, the SMG from Vex Offensive, it can get multi kill clip plus outlaw. It is an extremely good SMG because of that combo. The Tranquility Snipe Rifle from the Moon, it maybe wouldn't be as good, but it can get Firing Line. The Love and Death Grenade Launcher from the Moon, because that can get Full Court and Spike Grenades, it's now like the absolute best god roll grenade launcher for PvE in the game. It is incredibly desirable. People are farming the crap out of that weapon, all because of these new perks that were added back in Season of the Drifter. And if Bungie goes yet another new season without adding any new perks, I feel like things are going to get more and more stale. You can only get so many Outlaw Rampage hand cannons, for example, because especially since Bungie kind of refuses to introduce weapons that exist in new damage archetypes, so like we've had the same four hand cannon archetypes, like the 180s, the 150s, the 140s, and the 110s for years now. Like, why can't we get something different? Why can't we get something slower than 110 or faster than 180? Obviously, the last word is faster, but that's a different story. That's an exotic. But if we did, that would massively spice up the game. But it does introduce some big balancing issues, and that's why I think Bungie just refuses to do it. And so the only way we can really spice up weapons and make it so that even though there's new weapons, they don't just feel like reskins, right? Because that is unfortunately the feeling that you get when all these new weapons are added. If they don't have unique perk rolls, like what's the point of adding them? You can only add so many 140 hand cannons before like they all start feeling the exact same. And you have already extremely good ones like the Ostringer. Are you going to add one that's just as good as the Ostringer? Well, it, like, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't have any impact on the game. So you need fresh new weapon perks to really distinguish a new batch of weapons. And the important thing is, if Bungie does add new weapon perks in with Season of Dawn, they're going to have a reverberating effect throughout multiple upcoming seasons through the year. So those new weapon perks maybe can be expanded in the next season where they appear on weapons and archetypes that they weren't in the previous season. And we're seeing that happen again with multi-kill clip and things like full court because they appear on different weapons of different archetypes. They make those weapons insanely desirable, really unique. So new weapon perks is such a huge thing for impacting the game not just for this season, but for the whole next year. And so guys, thanks for coming to my TED Talk. I'm just kidding. Thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed, found this interesting, want these things to be implemented, please remember to support the video by liking and especially sharing the video. If you guys wanna see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you wanna get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That's linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.